Okay guys, in this video lesson we're going to go into the next step of this process dealing with musical instruments and we're going to look at this idea of solving for open-ended pipes. Okay, Now, depending on the class that you are in, uh, you may or may not have gotten to this part of the notes. Um, however, I'm going to start here so that way everybody can get uh, this for sure. Okay, If your class had got through open-ended pipes, uh, feel free to fast forward until you get to the part where you ended in your particular class. Okay, so we take a look at open-ended pipes. They're very much like strings in the fact that um, we are going to have set wavelengths or a fundamental frequency that we have, and certain harmonics or overtones that we get uh, available for those. So if we look here, the smallest we can get for the wavelength of uh, open-ended to open-ended pipe scenario is one half of a wavelength. So if you look, you have a, over here you have the trough going up to a crest. So basically this is a half of a wavelength. It may not look like a normal half that we usually draw on a board, but this is still one half of a wavelength. Okay. This is because you still need to have one node in the middle because your ends are at a free boundary. So your ends have to be able to be open for those pipes to be open. Okay? You jump down to that first overtone or that second harmonic, and now we see we have one full wavelength through here. So you go from trough to trough, or from crest to crest, or a single full wavelength on this one, or two halves. Down here, we go from crest to crest, back to trough, so we have one and a half wavelengths here, or three halves. Here we have four halves, here we have five halves. So again, just like for strings, everything is built off of halves of wavelengths, okay? So looking at our pattern, um, it's identical to a string. So if you can do uh, the math for a string, you can do the exact same math for an open-ended pipe scenario, okay? Our equation stays the same. Um, the only difference here is that the ends, we have anti-nodes, and the node is in the middle, okay? Um, where strings, we had nodes on the ends. That's really our only difference here, okay? Um, if we take a look at this animation with this now, very much like the strings, okay? If I turn off all the extra harmonics, and I look, the first harmonic, allows just that much movement. So we have a half. We jump to the second harmonic, we get this. The third harmonic. Notice again we have free boundaries on either end because we have open-ended pipes in this scenario. Okay. Now if we combine all of them together and we get all these different harmonics, you can see all the individuals there, but if we put together, this is what gives us the timber. Okay, um, Here's our overall standing wave. It's much more complex than a single standing wave, but this is what gives us that timber that we were talking about in terms of the overall sound we get or the fullness of the sound we get from each individual instrument. Okay, Where every instrument has a little bit different focus on which harmonic dominates that with their first one. Okay, Now going back into our notes, that's chemistry. Going back into our notes here, we see that everything's the same for the equation. Okay, so the mass is the same. Um, N is still your harmonic number. You're still using the half because we have a half wavelength pattern. With speed of wave is in air. You might want to make a note here. Now the velocity is the speed of the wave in air. Maybe circle this, highlight that, that kind of deal. With strings, we're talking about the velocity as it moved up and down the string, so it wasn't in air. But here it is in air, so we need to make sure that we're dealing with that. Which means, if we're at zero degrees Celsius, we'd have 331 meters per second. Okay, And then we know how to adjust the speed in air based off of temperature. We did that equation previously. Okay, So here's a couple of practice problems. We have pipe open at both ends with a fundamental frequency of 300 hertz. Temperature is zero degrees Celsius. Okay, so we're recalling that 331 is that uh, speed of, at zero degrees Celsius. So what's the length of the pipe? Okay, same idea as before. Set up your equation. Now that we're solving for the length of the pipe, you're going to have to rearrange it a little bit, and then solve it. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video here and do this and solve it, and then once you're done, hit play again, and we'll go over the answer. Okay, so now that you've done this. I know some of you haven't, um, but most of you have, hopefully. If we take a look at our answer, 
we're looking at the fundamental frequency of being 300. So we're using the first harmonic, plugging the numbers in. I'm just going to switch L and F from each other. So we're going to solve for L instead of F, and I can just switch those places. Um, first harmonic, 331 is my speed. Got my two, 300 hertz or 300 per second, so seconds cancel out, and we get 0.552 meters here. Okay, uh, limited to three significant figures because of the frequencies here. Okay, what's the fourth harmonic? Now there's two ways of solving this. You can do it the easy way, just take the 300 times four, or you could plug it back into the equation also, and either one works. Okay, the reason why we show you this is it's possible that you may not know this in a problem. We may just say, hey, you have a pipe that's 0.552 meters long, what's the fourth harmonic of that? And you'd have to solve it without having this information in front of you. So in that case, you'd have to use the fourth harmonic, this would be a four inside of here. You know your velocity, you know the length of the pipe, the fourth harmonic would then be the 1200 hertz. Okay? But because we knew the 300, it is just four times 300 for 1200 hertz also for this one. Okay. All right, there are additional practice problems related to open-end pipes in your homework assignment for this lesson. We're going to move on now to solving when you have a closed-end pipe. Now, when we talk about a closed-end pipe, that doesn't mean that both ends are closed, because then that would mimic a string. Um, for a closed-end pipe, we have one end open and one end closed. All right? um, in that scenario, things change a little bit for us. So here, if we take a look, we have a closed end on a pipe. So when you have a closed end, you have to have a node. So this has to be a node. But the open end has to be an anti-node. So if you notice, now the pipe, the first harmonic is only a fourth of a wavelength, not a half. Okay? So we're dealing with fourths. But because you have to always have an open end and a closed end, you can't have the even numbered harmonics. Okay, so when you have a closed end pipe scenario, you only produce the odd harmonics. Okay, so you can have one fourth or three fourths or five fourths of a wave, you never can get two fourths, you can never get half of a wavelength because half a wavelength would end up being a node here again. It can't be that. Okay, so the same. We're still dealing with finding that node, the open end. We're still dealing with length and wavelength being related to each other. Big difference here now, two big differences, is we do it by fourth, and we can't have any of the even harmonics. Okay? As a result, we get same idea. So the equation is the same, where we have f sub n, but now this becomes a 4 instead of a 2. Velocity is still the same. And then our harmonics, the only ones that work are the odd ones. So you can't put a 2, a 4, a 6 for n. So make a note that it cannot be 2, 4, 6 for those that wouldn't exist. Okay? This kind of pipe does not allow that to happen. Okay? So we have odd harmonics only here. Besides that, it's all the same. Okay? We use a 4 instead of a 2. Do your odd harmonics. So we're still using the speed of sound and air, and L is still the length of our pipe. Let's go into our equations and solve for these now. You have an Pipe open at one end has a fundamental frequency of 440 hertz. Okay? So if it's only open at one end, that means the other end is closed. So this would be a closed pipe scenario. We have a fundamental frequency of 440 hertz, and we have a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. So now we're going to solve for the length of the pipe. And then we're going to solve for the new fundamental frequency if we warm it up to 30 degrees Celsius. Okay? So again, we want to take a minute here, solve these. All right? And then once you're done solving them, then uh, pause the video first, solve them, and then hit play again and see how you did on that. Okay, so we'll pause it here. And then we will now go back in and show you how to solve these. Again, we change our equation. Um, we have a fundamental frequency, so it's one fourth or one. It's four because we're dealing with a closed end system. Again, I'm going to rotate my frequency and my L because I'm solving for length and not frequency. So algebraically, these things basically switch places. We have a velocity of 331 because it's 0 degrees Celsius. And our fundamental frequency was 440. So we end up with 0.188 meters here. Okay. Again, I didn't worry too much about significant figures on this one because um, the problem wasn't really written 
to really identify that. If, is this a measured zero? Is it exactly zero and what we're talking about for that? So we have 0.188 meters. So the length of that pipe would be this. Now that we know the length of the pipe, if we warm something up or cool something down, we can use this to solve for what that new frequency is going to be. We need to now adjust our velocity. So step one is the velocity 331 plus 0.6 times your 30 degrees Celsius. So we end up getting a velocity of 349 meters per second. Once we know our velocity, we can plug that back into our same equation where fours are in the bottom. We're still dealing with the fundamental frequency, but now it's 349 instead of 331. We know the length of our pipe. I use the unrounded number here and I end up getting 464 hertz, or 464 per seconds as our frequency for this one, okay? So that is a closed end pipe system. And again, there are additional practice problems for you guys to use um, if you go into that practice, those practice problems for this. Okay, so we're gonna end the video lesson here. This takes us through um, both types of pipes and how they work. You should be able to now take this and then solve for everything you need to on the homework assignment. Thank you.